Hi, today we're going to talk about science and social studies for kindergartners and um, curriculum that you can use. I don't know if you necessarily need a, a curriculum to follow, but I will give you a couple of th ideas of things that I give to the families that I work with and that might give you some confidence and help you get started. There's a book called uh, Five in a Row and what that book does is takes a picture book, say the story of Ping, and has you read it for five days. And on the first day, you might focus on uh, where the book takes place. Maybe the next day you, you focus on foods that ducks are in, I don't know. And then uh, maybe some geography or uh, some science, maybe you talk about water and uh, things, but there are activities that go with the book uh, that you read every day. Now, I, I, some of the families that I work with don't really like reading the book for five days, but it at least gives you a jumping off point and you can try it and see if you like that. So if you want something to follow, then I recommend five in a row. All right, so um, I don't know if you really should, really need to start formal history teaching to a five-year-old. But if you want to, then there are two books I'll recommend. One is called The Story of the World. I would, I tend to like my families to wait until their first or second grade before starting that. Um, but if you want a history book, then that's a good one to start with. And then another one that kind of along those same lines is called A Child's History of the World. Now, A Story of the World, it has a big fat activity book that you can buy that goes along with it which again, is kind of like five in a row, gives you activities to do with each of your readings. So you can read and um, have fun with uh, the lesson, or you can just simply breeze through the book and read it just for fun. You don't have to do any of the activities, but if you want to, there are some suggestions there. Okay, so now for history, or for social studies, is, is kind of what I like our, my families to focus on. And uh, for, fo uh, for social studies for a five and six year old, we kind of need to find, help, help them focus on their place in the world. And so that begins with family, and um, maybe talk about families, talk about a family tree, make a family tree, put it on the wall, spend some time with that. Um, and then go just outside of that to your neighbors and your neighborhood. And one thing that we would do is engage uh, with our neighbors and making cookies or muffins or pull up their trash cans or do uh, things for our neighbors that would um, help us connect with the people that we live nearby. And uh, once you've done your neighbors, then you can go just a little bit bigger to your uh, neighborhood or your community. Who are the people in your community? And that is when you, you get to learn about the post office and you, you know, write a letter and mail it to yourself. How fun is that? Or mail it to grandma and see how fast it gets there. And um, go to the gas station and you can ask people, you can even develop some questions that your child can ask them if they want to. Like, do you like your job? And how long have you been working here? And what kind of things do you do? Um, but you introduce them to people in the community and jobs in the community. And you can spend the whole year just doing this, learning about different occupations. And of course, there's always the standards, you know, the dentist and the firemen and the policemen. So definitely you need to take them to the fire station and just to the police station and to the these different places that they, well, maybe not the police station. I've never gone there. That might be something to try. But anyway, take them out in the community and uh, use words like occupation and talk to them about those kinds of things. So for social studies, I really just like them to focus on where they live, who they are in their own family, and um, start history that way. And then, of course, um, you can talk about to the symbols, our national symbols, and discuss the flag and the Pledge of Allegiance and, and those kinds of things because it's important that they know what that means. So social studies, you got a whole curriculum just focusing on who they are, their family tree, um, and, and those kinds of things. Also for my kinders, for uh, the ones that I work with, I like parents to teach them a new chore every month. And uh, ours would be, 
you know, of course, the simple sweeping and washing dishes, unloading the dishwasher, uh, those kinds of things. And then we had to morph up to something different. So it was, okay, learn to vacuum out the car and uh, wash a window and, you know, smash bugs or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Just different chores around the house. That definitely falls underneath that um, heading of social skills or social studies and teaching them how to be a good citizen and how to care for people. This is awesome. Think that if you could teach your children to love people and care for them, that's a wonderful skill. Okay, so now um, let's, that's social studies I love it. It's very fun to incorporate that in your day. Okay, but now, science. Science is so fun and it can be so easy. It can be so hard for some parents. They don't like it because it takes a little bit of work. But what I like my families to do when they do science is to actually do nature studies. And so for that, I mean, I want uh, these children to go outside every day and to, they're very close to the ground, have them look at those bugs and watch them and be able to name the ant and the pill bug and the or the roly poly and a worm and, and investigate and see what it is those things do. I like them to uh, get the butterfly kits and um, the ant farm and do those kinds of things where they get to learn about butterflies and uh, the ants. Um, I think it's important that they just spend time digging in the dirt. So as a uh, science for kinders, I like them to uh, start a garden or plant some flowers and be responsible for growing those. And uh, so for science, then I want them to, I was talking about flowers, I want them to grow some flowers or some plants. Um, not just grow them, but be able to name what they are. And uh, that's a, a wonderful skill for your little ones to be able to do. So science, um, learning about insects, getting outside every day, planting a garden and doing something like that. Okay, so another thing with science is actually doing science in the kitchen. And that is uh, actually when they cook with you and they see that when you're making a grilled cheese sandwich, the toast changes colors. Say, like, wow, isn't that something? We just add some heat and it changed colors. And you can just talk about that. You don't have to get into the scientific why it happens, just that it happens. Or what happens when you heat up water? What are the three stages of water? The three form, not stages, but the three states of uh, water, um, you know, with the steam and the ice. And you can do experiments with ice. How long does it take our ice cube to um, form in the freezer and... Uh, can you freeze uh, um, applesauce faster than water or water is it which one's faster and doing things like that so you so all of these experiments that you can do with water are fabulous too um, you can get a simple book from the library on water and do experiments that way or anything Janice Van Cleve I love her stuff it's they, she has simple experiments and things um, to do. Also, another kindergarten science focus can be the simple machine. And if you don't know what that is, then you're going to look it up and learn with them. Isn't that so fun? That's the beauty of homeschooling is that you get to learn too. So uh, focusing on the insects, that's a all, well, we've studied that for years, not even just one year, but for years. So insects, studying those, um, studying water and uh, the properties of water and um, investigating that. And uh, then the other thing to do for science is to talk about the weather. And you can make, keep track of the weather, do a weather chart. They can have a... Um, something on the wall and they say it's cloudy today and it's cloudy tomorrow and it's still cloudy well in some places it's not cloudy and and when they get clouds it's kind of fun so to to be able to talk about the clouds and and maybe the water cycle and how it rains and and lands on the ground and then it gets it evaporates up into the clouds and then rains and so discussing the water cycle all that that kind of stuff that you can do with uh, little kinders that you don't need uh, worksheets and stuff for them to do. You just want to talk and play. And if you want to draw it and do something like that, then go ahead and do that. But I'm not really big on worksheets for kindergartners. Um, so um, anyway, 
now here's one more thing that I did with my kinders and I, I ask uh, my families that I work with to do is to to have the children choose an animal that they might want to work up, uh, learn about each week. And, and it might be maybe once every other week that you go to the library and let's say they choose kangaroos. Then you go to the kangaroo sections and they pick out kangaroo books and you bring them home and you read books about kangaroos and uh, you talk about uh, the pockets and, and uh, you talk about the types of kangaroos, where do kangaroos live, what do they eat, and um, then you read the book Katie No Pocket, and anything you can find on kangaroos, and you just become an expert for a week on kangaroos. And at the end of the week, if you want them to do a report on kangaroos, then you sit at the computer and you say, okay, tell me everything that you know about kangaroos. And as they talk, you are typing everything they know about kangaroos. And, and I say, well, what do they eat? Oh yeah, so as they're talking, you're typing their words and, um, and putting it all up. And then at the end, you can print out a picture of a kangaroo and stick it on there and you have a report for that little kinder. And it is so fun and something that they're very proud of. So science, I think, for kindergarten and uh, first grade, uh, four, five, and six-year-olds can be very simple, but full of information and content. And uh, so my suggestion is stay away from uh, workbooks for, kinder, for uh, science and social studies, do more activity things and get them involved and engaged in the learning and uh, just have fun with it. So I'm going to put some notes down there in my uh, blog about the curriculum, I might have forgot some, so I'll note them there. And uh, if you have some more questions, then just email me and I'd be happy to give you some more suggestions. But I think this is good to get you started. Have a great year.